Hello there, my creative friends. Um, Sarah Simpson here. I am a mixed media artist, someone who really likes to draw, and an avid sketchbooker. And I just filled in my sketchbook, um, and I thought I'd take a tour. Take you on a, I'm gonna take a tour. I'm gonna take you on a tour. I'm gonna take you on a tour of this sketchbook. So let's go. Okay, so welcome to uh, the, my sketchbook tour. Um, so first of all, I'll tell you about the sketchbook itself. It's um, an Illo brand sketchbook, Illo brand, and um, it has a nice hard cover. Um, and the paper, I would compare it to a Bristol paper. It has um, kind of, it's kind of a coated um, paper. And I really like it for um, alcohol markers, um, which is a medium that I tend to use a lot. Um, yeah, and let's see, uh, the stickers on the front, most of them are um, just test stickers that um, I made. I got my first die cutting machine over the summer, and so um, I'd make some stickers and slap them on here. Um, there are a couple. These are from Fox and Cactus. Um, and from Love Soup, she has really, um, nice chill, uh, art, art blog if you, uh, like that kind of thing. So, okay, let's get into the actual sketchbook. Um, so the first page of my sketchbook is actually the last page that I created. Um, I like to make the first page kind of like, um, a title page, um, this is the third one that I filled in. Um, I've actually, I counted the other day, um, since 2018, which is when I um, decided to really dedicate myself to really trying to um, draw every day, making it um, a practice. Um, I've completed 14 sketchbooks, but I don't number them all. I have messy sketchbooks, and then I've got practice sketchbooks where I try to make like a little bit nicer drawings in it, um, although you'll see there's a lot of messy <laughs> drawings in here anyway, but so um, yeah, this was um, just, I don't know, I still didn't know what I wanted to do for the title page and I just wanted to get it done. So it's a number three and then that's um, me and that's my dog Izzy and then that's my cat, Sophie. And I started this September 2020, and um, I ended it in February 2021. So um, the first spread in my sketchbook, um, I decided I wanted to do the 100 Heads Challenge, but like typical Sarah, I had to make it complicated, and I was going to do the 100 Heads Challenge, as a way to brainstorm characters for my Inktober this year. And um, the first prompt for my Inktober, I did my own prompt list, the Magical Mystical Edition. It's my first year doing my own prompt list. Um, my first character was uh, a fortune teller. And so these are um, kind of brainstorming what my fortune teller could look like. And I was really um, loving these head wraps. And um, by the time I did a second spread of heads, I was like, okay, uh, these are taking me a while and I'm not going to be able to do this challenge as a way to prepare for another challenge. Yeah. So um, here's my second spread of heads and just uh, looking at reference from Pinterest and trying to stylize them and looking at different skin tones and things like that. And... Um, Oh, I guess I should mention, um, I do tend to skip every other spread, and the reason I do it that way is because I use markers a lot, and they bleed through, and I don't really like starting on a page that has bleed on it, um, it but I do like um, having like a full spread to draw on, so that's how I organize it. And then the other reason I don't like to draw in the back is that if something in here turns out well and I want to turn it into a sticker or a print, I've noticed that if um, after I scan it in, sometimes um, 
you'll get some like ghosting. So one thing that I'll actually do that I haven't done yet is that um, I will glue the pages together once I'm done, you know, but I haven't done that yet. And um, actually, I think my dog's barking, so one moment. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, these were... I'm having a brain fart because I just stopped wearing a burr, burr, burr. Um, so anyway, um, these, I was just drawing some of my favorite tools and making them little fat short versions of them. Um, go book markers, pencils, um, paint markers. I didn't finish this spread and, um, I'm not going to, so, um, uh, after this, I actually ended up taking like a little break and focusing on my Inktober, and then I jumped back in here in November and um, started on these um, Frenchies. And so this last summer, August of 2020, I launched my website and my first shop, and um, I decided this year that I wanted to do um, a Christmas collection, um, and I launched with um, a card design and a couple of sticker sheets. And so these are ideas. Um, one of the sticker sheets that I did was uh, fancy Frenchies. I just thought it would be cute to do kind of like a winter themed. And um, this is a sticker in my shop. I think he turned out pretty cute. And um, this made it onto the sticker sheet. And um, this was my greeting card design. I um, did a small run and I sold maybe little more than half of them, I think. So I feel like that uh, was a success for my first um, Christmas and my Christmas collection and not um, really marketing it that well or know what I'm doing. So whatever. Yeah, more, more Frenchies. Um, I think this guy turned out cute. He's my favorite. Oh, I'm just sticking oh, my shot yeah. too. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> and then... Um, this was another greeting card, con greeting card concept and inspired by my dog, Izzy. But I don't know. I didn't really like any of these drawings. And, uh, you know, I think I was just in a little bit of a funk, but that's okay. And then um, these are missile toads. And I did turn these into a sticker sheet, and these did well on my Etsy. These are what I definitely sold the most of and um, had to keep reprinting. And um, I think this one, this one, this one, and this one made it onto the sheet. And, um, yeah. And I made this guy, I printed this guy out and made, like, a little uh, tag and put him on my tree, even though his arms are too long. <laughs> Don't body shame my toad, okay? All right. So um, these, another concept I did for my Christmas collection, um, it was Yetis, and um, I think they turned out pretty cute, and I made a sticker sheet, but um, they didn't really sell that well. I sold a handful of them maybe, but that's okay. I made these into little gift tags. Um, more frogs. I think that one turned out cute. Like, um, this one I actually saw, like, a little reference photo, and I added a scarf. And um, This I made into a freebie sticker for December. Um, I cropped it into a stamp shape and added some text on it that said, I'm some bunny who shops small. So clever, I know. But um, it turned out cute. I just, I like the simplicity of this little bunny. I don't know. And then this, um, I like the concept of uh, this Yeti with the, um, using his horns as kind of like a luggage rack, but um, I don't know, pink was the wrong choice, and I never, I guess I probably could have uh, gone back and altered the colors, but I didn't. I didn't feel like it, so it's okay. And uh, this might be my least favorite spread in the sketchbook, I think. I think this is when I was entering full force funk. And, uh, but I was brainstorming some ideas for stickers that I could put on my packages that I mail out. And, um, I didn't use any of them. I didn't like them. 
Um, this side, I started experimenting with um, acrylic paint markers or Poscas. And um, yeah, I think I discovered through the process, I've experimented, you'll see um, quite a bit with Poscas. And I really like them for adding texture on top of my markers and highlights and that kind of thing. But um, I don't like making full-on Posca art, even though I love the way it looks. Like I love... Um, some of this, the art I'm seeing from other artists that make these kind of bold, simple pieces. But for my art style and the way I like to work, it's just, it's not, it's, it's not fun for me. <laughs> I have, I think I have a loosey goosey style that doesn't work with that. So, um, this uh, was just a little drawing I made for a friend, uh, her and her dog that she requested. And we made some little, um, note cards for her. And uh, this was an experiment with, um, I decided to fill a water, a fillable watercolor brush with um, some Prussian blue acrylic ink. And um, yeah, it came out very patchy. It, the ink kind of like sat on top of the paper, I feel like, which I ended up leaving because I thought maybe it would, um, it kind of added something to the piece, but um I don't know. I wonder if I put a second coat on there, I could probably get a little more even. And then um, here I started, um, I said I wanted to start experimenting with micron pens and technical pens and seeing what my art looked like with thinner line art. And um, I don't like it. I think I my art looks better with brush pen. I think maybe it's just... Uh, the line art looks more confident or something, but I don't know. It's good to experiment. Sometimes it's good to experiment so that you appreciate the other tools that you already use, I guess. And um, so this here, I was just kind of thinking about like sometimes you've got shit going on around you and you just kind of got to live in your own little world and uh, do your own thing. And um, since my missile toads had done well, I thought that... Um, I would do like a sticker sheet of frogs and um, mushrooms or something like that and I never did end up doing anything but I was experimenting with kind of the shapes and uh, different ways that could make them look and I showed these to my mom and she says she doesn't like the lips <laughs> but I actually think that's my favorite one I like the lips oh. and uh here I just did, um, these are studies from photos, from reference photos, which I actually hadn't done for a long time. And um, one of the things that I think I learned from this is um, I learned a lot of, from coloring. I, I ended up focusing a lot on trying to um, replicate the colors that I'm um, seeing in the photos. And um, it kind of forced me to blend colors differently to try to create some of the colors I was seeing. And I think it also, like, I feel like I could take this color palette and use it um, on an, a more an original piece of art. So I think it was a good experiment that I learned a lot from. And uh, this says um, more frogs. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to do like a New Year sticker, but I didn't, I didn't like this and I didn't feel like redrawing it. So and um, this one I do kind of like. I call this one Me and My Pet Frog. Um, it was another experiment with my um, brush. Actually, I have it right here. So um, this is a fillable brush. You can fill it with water and use it with watercolor, or I filled it with ink and tried to experiment with doing some outlines. It is hard to control. So what I ended up doing was doing my... Out my liner all in colored pencil first and then um, I took this and I tried to focus on like the areas where I thought there would be more shadow where you it would make sense to have some heavier lines so I do kind of like um, I do think it kind of has like a soft look softens it up compared to maybe the black line art I don't know And then um, I'll call them this the Frog Parade. Um, these I actually were experimenting with some watercolor, still experimenting with my thinner line art. Um, I do like the sketchy nature of the pants. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> and, um, 
but I colored these on one day and then colored these on the next one and I do notice that these ones turned out very muddy and these ones turned out a lot better so I don't know what happened I, I don't work with watercolor enough and then um let's see did I no I think I did explain that okay so this is um this here is a paint swatch that for wall paint that I glued in here. Hold on, my dog's barking. Okay, my dog's taken care of. I'm back. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so this was a, a paint swatch for wall paint, and I um, used some Posca paint marker on top, and. Um, my intention was to kind of layer it up and going from more like darker colors to lighter colors because that creates that sense of depth. Things farther away tend to look lighter in color, but I dropped a big glob of paint on there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, these are some cats that I drew in Pasca. Um, I think these two are kind of cute. And... Um, yeah, these are some polar bears that are not very cute, in my opinion. Um, just experimenting with kind of simplified style a little bit. I just, I don't know. I feel like I would have to do a lot more work to get to a more, like, simplified style that I would be happy with because, I don't know, I just have, like, a wonky style that I think maybe works better with looser line art. I don't know. Or am I using style as an excuse? I don't know. You tell me. Um, another um, experiment with a paint swatch in Posca marker. Um, the first color on here is fall chill, and that made me think of kind of like a rainy, a rainy scene. So um, I did that, and um, I will say that these these uh, wall paint swatches are nice for the Posca marker. They go down a lot smoother than on the paper, where they tend to get kind of textury. And um, these are some bird studies. Uh, not my favorite. Uh, the, I also used watercolor and then some paint marker on top. Um, I do kind of like the flamingo. I think the texture looks kind of cool. Um, and these are some uh, landscape studies. Um, I feel like that's an area that I'm very weak in, um, drawing background art and landscapes and more of the scenes, and I think that's really important. It's something that I neglected as a younger artist. I feel like I was only inter interested in drawing faces, and so um, this is something I want to get better at and more interested in now, and these are studies from other people's art. Um, this is an original from someone named Matt Sands, and they posted this on ArtStation. And this, I have no idea. It looks kind of like a Studio Ghibli fan art or scene, but I couldn't find a source. Um, and I haven't actually seen any Studio Ghibli, even though I think they're beautiful. And uh, uh, the screenshots that I've seen. Um, this was, I think, a Samsung phone background, and I couldn't find any order artist information. and um, Or a phone wallpaper, I believe is what people call them. And then um, this is the original was by or is by Ariel Silverstein. Um, so that was a copy of her work there. And more freaking frogs. Anyone else tired of frogs? Yeah, um, this is about the time I decided no more thin art line art. I'm going back to my brush pen. Um, I miss my brush pen. I think there's something. Yeah, I think maybe the bolder lines are more confident. I also have more practice in it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just need to practice more with the Micron. But for now, I'm back to my brush pen. I just like that bolder look. And um, these were just more um, head studies. Went back to that. Um, yeah, I feel like I went through a lot of artist block through the sketchbook and so I ended up going back to doing a lot of studies not as much like creative original ideas in this one as in my other two sketchbooks but that's okay um and then um 
These are um, for Chinese New Year. So this year is Year of the Ox, and so I did some little ox characters, and this side I painted, I colored them in with um, paint marker, and then this side I um, colored them in with alcohol markers, and then I ended up scanning these in and making a sticker sheet that I think turned out pretty cute, and it's in my shop. And um, this is probably my favorite spread in this sketchbook. So. This one in particular was inspired by this felted creature, like a little stuffed animal type thing that I found on Pinterest. Um, I'll, I think it was stowaway toys maybe or something like that. So I'll find the information and include it in the description. But so um, that sparked for me kind of like I wanted to see what all their little friends and people look like. And uh so, like, I thought, like, the older character would, maybe he'd be more of a tree. And I wish I would have given him more, like, old eyes to kind of, like, go with that. And then, you know, like, what would a, a pet look like? And, you know, um, what would the babies look like? They probably only have sprouts, you know. So, I don't know. I really explored this one and thought quite a bit about it, obviously. So, um, this is a... Um, this is inspired by, I feel like, uh, being in quarantine the last year, as most of us have been, um, just thinking a lot about like cozy spaces and what do other people's spaces look like or what do my characters' spaces look like. And I was also exploring kind of this concept of like showing the city where you don't see any greenery, but you've kind of, you've created this cove of greenery for yourself and your apartment kind of, yeah, that's what I was exploring with that. And then um, this, I found a reference photo of like a coffee pot that someone had put some aquarium type things in it. And I added the goldfish. That was all original, that part right there. And um, this uh, I have as a speed draw at, for my first YouTube video that I did. So. You can check that out if you want to, but um, it's also an exploration of just kind of thinking about cozy spaces. I found this picture, um, this cool picture was like a big green chair with plants behind it. And so I added myself and my dog and Izzy into it. And um, yeah, I kind of like the way this one turned out. And then um, this is a another study from a photo and... Um, there's a really cool photo of this gorilla looking at a butterfly on her finger, and I like it. I feel like it's a reminder to stop and look at the small things, enjoy the butterflies, that kind of thing. And then these are ape studies, and the difference between apes and monkeys are that apes do not have tails, and monkeys do. And, um... I think that my chimps are super creepy. This one, I think she looks wise. And I do um, like old blue eyes here in the middle. Naturally, they have um, brown eyes, orangutans do, but look at those blue eyes. They pop, they pop. And then um, I don't draw men very often, so I was like, I'm going to do some studies of men with beards. And that's what I did here. <laughs> and I um, I also started experimenting with adding some um, colored pencil on top, and I do want to explore that some more. And um, then my last red is just a bunch of stickers. These are all a bunch of stickers, and I just stuck them in here as I was uh, experimenting with them. So that's what this spread turned into. So, um, that concludes my sketchbook tour. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this sketchbook tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please hit that like button, uh, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate um, every little bit of support I get. You can also see um, my current sketchbook on Instagram by Sarah Simpson. I, uh, share a couple times a week uh, things that I'm currently working on and um, until next time keep on arting in the real world bye